everyone. My name is Yutaka Ono from Center for Integrity Research of Future Electronics in Nago University, Japan. So in this lecture, I'd like to present molybdenum disulfide nanogenerator that harvest electricity from movement of water droplets. In recent years, energy harvesting technologies have attracted much attention as a power source to realize self-powered IoT sensors. There are various small energy sources in environments such as light, heat, vibration, electromagnetic wave, water flow, and so on. By generating the electricity from the small energy existing in the surrounding environment, it becomes possible to drive sensors without battery or you know, power line. So in this work, we focus on energy of water flow. We've always used fluidic energy for a long time ago in our life to drive water wheel, to rotate millstone, and to generate electricity and so on. The fluidic energy is renewable and environment-friendly power source, and it's important to increase the use of the fluidic energy for the sustainability of our, so our society. The nanogenerator that generates electricity from fluidic energy in the environment is also useful to realize self-powered IoT sensor that monitors the environment in nature and explore the marine resources in the sea, for example. In 2003, the voltage generation of 3 millivolt was observed from single world carbon nanosh film placed in the uh, flow of water. And in 2014, the graphene-based nanogenerator was reported from the group of Nanjing University of Aeronautics and Astronautics in China. So when the droplet of electrolyte solution moved on the graphene, the voltage of 0.15 millivolt was generated. We also observed the voltage generation by the movement of the droplet with the carbon thin film. The carbon thin films are advantageous in terms of the scalability, and we obtained a generated voltage of more than 50 millivolt, which was more than uh, two orders of magnitude larger than that obtained for the graphene. However, the voltage is still not enough to uh, drive semiconductor electronic circuits of the IoT sensors. Normally, at least 0.5 to 0.7 volt is necessary to drive silicon CMOS based electronics. So, here we consider possible mechanism of the voltage generation and how the uh, output voltage is determined. So when the droplet of the electrolyte solution is put on the carbon thin film, the electric double layer is formed at the interface. So this causes the potential dis uh, difference uh, along the horizontal direction of the carbon thin film between the region below the droplet and outside the droplet. So this potential barrier pushes the carriers in the carbon film towards the uh, electrodes when the droplet moves. So this generates the current. And this is the equivalent circuit model of this uh, system we proposed. The current source represents the uh, current generated by the movement of the droplet. And the open circuit voltage is determined by the generated current and the shunt resistances, which belong to carbon natural thin film and electrolyte solution. 
We developed the theoretical formula for the generated current and voltage. So the, uh, the current is determined by the difference in the carrier concentration in the region below the, and outside the droplet. And it, that increases proportionally with the velocity of the droplet. The double layer capacitance is dependent on the ion concentration, as can be seen here. And there are two shunt resistances, the resistances of the uh, carbon nitrogen thin film and the solution. The conductance of solution is also dependent on the ion concentration. Indeed, this model well agrees with our experimental observations. So to increase the output voltage, it's essential to increase the resistivity of the film. Semiconducting 2D material such as molybdenum disulfide is highly resistive ultra thin material and therefore would be suitable for the fluidic nanogenerator. So we started this work by developing the technique to grow large area single layered molybdenum sulfide film by CVD. The key point to grow the single layer molybdenum sulfide uniformly on the whole surface of the uh, substrate was to distribute molybdenum oxide powder in a ceramic boat under the uh, sapphire substrate. By this technique, we obtained uniform molybdenum sulfide film on a one by three square centimeter substrate, as you can be seen in this photo. And the photoluminescence and the Raman spectroscopies confirmed that the molybdenum sulfide is high quality and single layered. Here is the molybdenum sulfide nanogenerator fabricated on the flexible plastic film. The molybdenum sulfide layer grown on the sapphire substrate was transferred onto the uh, polyethylene naphthalate substrate and the silver paste electrodes were formed on the both edges. The IV characteristics show the uh, seat resistance of the uh, 3 giga ohm per square. In the voltage generation experiment, uh, we dropped a sodium chloride solution on the uh, molybdenum sulfide that is uh, tilted by 45 degree as shown here in this movie. These figures respectively show the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current when the droplets were dropped one by one. So each droplet generates a large voltage over six volts. The short circuit current was five nanoamps for each droplet. To measure the output power, we connected the uh, load resistance and measured the voltage across the resistor. So this figure shows the uh, generated voltage and the power as a function of the load resistance. The peak power of 1.75 nanowatt was obtained uh, for the droplet under the impedance matching condition. So the uh, performance of our nano generator was compared in the right hand figure. Here, we plot open circuit voltage versus short circuit current for the fluidic nano generators based on the multi-layered molybdenum sulfide and the single layered graphene reported previously. Our nano generator can generate high voltage as 7 volts, and only our nano generator can generate sufficient voltage to drive semiconductor electronics, probably due to the high resistivity of the semiconducting atomic layer material. However, the short circuit current is smaller than the graphene. To increase the output current and the power, it's necessary 
to optimize the calorie concentration of the molybdenum dun sulfide layer by doping. Here, we show the enhancement of output voltage and current with multiple droplets. We connected three nanogenerators in series or in parallel and dropped a droplet for each nanogenerator. In the case of a series connection, we obtained three times larger voltage and power. In the parallel configuration, three times larger current and power were obtained. These experiments suggest the scalability of the nanogenerator. Finally, we examined the possibility to generate electricity from a sea wave by using molybdenum sulfide nanogenerator. We placed the nanogenerator vertically in the seawater so that the water surface goes up and down on the molybdenum sulfide surface. In this case, we obtained AC voltage with uh, an uh, amplitude of about 1.5 volt at a load resistance of 500 mega ohm. The maximum output power was 7.5 nanowatt. So in this work, so we explored the potential of the highly resistive semiconductor 2D material as the fluidic nanogenerator. We obtained the high output voltage of 6 to 7 volts from the movement of the droplet. The output power was about 1.7 nanowatt per droplet. We showed the output power of the nanogenerator was scalable. We also demonstrated electricity harvesting from the movement of seawater as a, a potential application. And I'd like to thank my colleague, uh, Dr. Adohasukuma Aji, in my group. He did all of the experiments of this work. And the molybdenum disulfide was grown at the uh, Professor Hiroki Ago's group of QC University. This work was supported by JST Crest, and related works have been published in these papers. And if you are interested in our work, please access to these papers. Thank you very much.